and welcome to our video on volume of some of my favorite shapes, cylinders, and cones, I like ice cream, and spheres, it's a hard word to spell, but there it is, spheres, and actually the only thing we need to know to really understand the volume for all these shapes is a circle, that's it. Uh, because the volume of a circle, you might remember, is pi r squared. That's an r. Pi r squared. So that tells us the area of a circle. And then in all these shapes, right, in cylinders and cones and spheres, all of these shapes have circles in them. So here we have the area of a circle. It's pi r squared. And then if you know that, you know everything else you need to know about spheres and cones and cylinders. And the only difference really, and I'm going to write this in purple, because I like purple, is here we have two dimensions, right, living in flat land, and then let's move up in the world and get some sun, we have three dimensions. So we're going from 2D to 3D, and the only difference between a circle and a cylinder is height. That's why if you want to find the volume of a cylinder, right, if you want to find the volume of a cylinder, oops, there we go, the volume of a cylinder is just a circle, right? It's a circle, pi r squared. I mean, for me as a math teacher and, and a dork, pi r squared is just, I just see that's a circle. That's an area of a circle. So for the volume of a, of a, of a cylinder, it's the, the area of a circle times the height. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, and we'll look at some pictures of that. But if you take a flat shape like a circle, and then you give it an, a third dimension, right? If you give it height, you've got volume. So volume, I mean, this is why many students, when you ask them, what's going on in the shape will describe volume as area. And they're not exactly wrong, it's just that, that volume is like 3D area. That's what volume really is. And now, now I'm gonna use SketchUp to show my idea. This, I mean, this is the way I think about it. So, so here's this person, I'm gonna, sorry person, I'm gonna kill them. And here's my, my circle. Now, if I, if I drag a circle right, on the plane and I stretch it out, I've got a circle, and if I orbit around it, you can start to see you know, there it is, there it is, and it's gone, totally gone, because it has absolutely no height. It's completely and totally flat. So that's pi r squared, that's my, that's my circle. But then, and then if you just multiply that by height, right, you take this shape and you drag it up, or down, I mean, any direction. So then you give it a height. So really, in the formula, you're just saying there's a circle, pi r, pi r squared, and then, and then multiply it by height. And then we have a, we have a, a cylinder, but I'm gonna color it in. And to color it in, I'm gonna actually use my, my brick tool here. I'll show you. The brick tool is cool because you can add texture, so if you wanna like build a building or something. But here I could show that this shape has layers. And what, I'll use this one. So if I color this in, right, you can see, and what you're looking at is if you look around the cylinder, what you're seeing over and over again are just a bunch of circles toppled on top of each other. That's why when you find, when you find the volume of a cylinder, it's just the amount of circles and a height. And you can, you can look around the shape. And there, again, is the circle. That's the idea of a cylinder. Now, now a cone is not that different. A cone is, is like a cylinder, but one third. Let me show you a cone. Now, cones are kind of fun to draw on, on SketchUp. And, here, and here's why. You take a cylinder, right? And you, you create your cylinder. And then if you think about what a cone is, right? A cone is just one third of a cylinder. So you can, almost, you can almost see it here, right? We're gonna take this point and we're gonna drag it to create a cone. So that, going from a cylinder, well, that's cool, an inverted cone. So then, here's my cylinder, and as I decrease that, this top of the cylinder, down, 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 to a point, we've got a cone. And this, this shape is cool because not only does it hold stuff like ice cream, but it also has one third of our cylinder. I'm going to paint this one in as well. I think we should choose red. Oh, dark red. Yeah, that's my cone. And if you flip the cone over, right, you see the circle at the base. So for, so for, a, cylind, for a, a cone, all you have to do is take the, the volume of a cylinder and divide it by, by three. So let me write that down. The, the volume of a, of a cone, what's that? Well, the volume of a cone, of a cone, oops, that's, an, that's my N equals one-third of, right, one-third of, you multiply, of a cylinder. And that's a cone. And then we have one shape left. And I'm excited because the sphere 
took me forever to figure out how to draw on Google SketchUp. Fortunately, they have a 700-page manual, which I read, um, and I found the part of it which had the sphere. So here's how we do it. So first, we're going to get rid of this person. And we've got our circle. Now, a sphere is such a, such a neat shape, and it's actually SketchUp, when you see the sphere, you'll notice that it's not exactly a, a sphere at all. It's an approximation. So I'm going to draw this circle here. There we go. And I'm going to tell that circle, this is how you use the program, to follow the circumference of this circle down here. Right? So I just go, hey, circle, follow this circle circumference. So spin around here. Let me just get the right tool. And when you do that, well, it'll spin. Oh, cool. I created this shape. This is like a dented sphere. Oh, what a cool shape. It's like a donut that, that blew up. So let me just make another one. Uh, so anyway, we have our circle down here. And I'm going to leave the person on. And I'll try again. And we drag the circle up. And there it is. And I tell it to follow the circle. You know? As you can see, I guess I didn't... Whoa. Oh, this is so cool. Anyway, one more time. So we're going to create a sphere. Now, the, the, the sphere, if you think about how the sphere works, the sphere is, if you have an equal, an equal cylinder, and in the sense that the height is the same and, and, the, and the diameter is equal, the sphere will take up two-thirds of that. And I'm going to be sad if I can't draw this. Okay, okay one more time. Mm. That's weird. It's not working. Anyway, oh. Oh, cool. I'm making the sphere somehow. But anyway, that, that's my sphere. And it's not exactly a sphere. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong because they're dented in the sides. But this sphere right here should be two-thirds of our cylinder, which leads us to our last formula. All right? the sphere, and, and, and you might be a Star Trek fan. Um, usually they refer to a sphere as four-thirds pi r cubed, which makes a lot of sense, and we'll talk about that in a second. But, but really what a sphere is, a sphere, oops, dun, 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 a sphere, is just, I, I mean, this is what I, it's two-thirds of a cylinder. That's what I think. It's two-thirds of a volume of a cylinder. And a volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times the height. And so two-thirds of that is our sphere. Now, now, how does Spock on Star Trek get to this? Four-thirds pi r cubed. Basically, what, what most Vulcans, I guess, have, have memorized is that the height doesn't need to be written as h for a sphere. Think about the sphere, right? Anywhere you go, the height is also this, the diameter. So height is like diameter, which is also two radiuses. Two radiuses is the same thing as a, a diameter. I'm just, I'm just rewriting this right here. If I plug that into my formula, kind of like a halfway step over here, it's 2 thirds pi radius squared. Now instead of times the height, it's times two radiuses, right? Because the height was the diameter which is two radiuses. And now we're almost to Spock's formula. Because Spock says 4 thirds pi r cubed. Well, here's one r. There's two more. And r squared is r times r times r. What's that? that that's just r to the third power. That's where Spock gets r to the third. We have pi already in our formula. There's that. And 4 thirds, you might, you might see it already, but 2. Right? That's my 2. 2 times 2 thirds, what's that? 2 times 2 thirds is just 4 thirds. And this is why on, on most state tests, they put this formula, right? It comes from this idea that a sphere is 2 thirds of a cylinder. And they just rewrite the formula. So instead of writing pi r squared height, it's pi r squared times 2 radiuses, and then they combine terms and simplify. But that's the volume of a sphere. It's just 2 thirds of a cylinder. And that's, it's surprising to me that the only formula behind everything here, as I said before, is just the area of a circle. And we'll look at that as one last thing. The volume of a cylinder, we'll write it one more time, is just pi r squared, a circle times a height. The volume of a cone is just, the, well, the area of a circle, pi r squared, times the height divided by 3. The circle pops up again. And the volume of a sphere is just, well, it's the area of a circle, right, times the height, that's a cylinder, times two-thirds. Those, those, <clears throat> those are other ways of writing it. And if you're a fan of oranges, you can move on to kind of our next investigation, which is, what is a surface area? 
of a sphere. And the reason I mentioned an orange is because some clever people in my class have figured out that if you take an orange and you peel it, you get this really cool, like, ellipse-shaped thing, right? So the surface area of a sphere is a really cool kind of investigation and something to think about for, for other videos. Anyway, see you later.